to pray. So I want to get right into this word. Let's go to Galatians chapter 4, starting from verse 4 to verse 7. And I will be reading from the NKJV version. That's the best version in my opinion. I know a lot of the people who, uh, who loves KJV, they just got mad just now, but it's all good. I love the New King James Version. And I want us to read starting from verse 4. To verse 7. I'm excited. I feel the word. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. And this is what it says. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to, the, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, this is my key verse, verse seven. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, than an heir of God through Christ. I want you to type in the chat right now and say, I am not a slave, but a son. I am not a slave, but a daughter. Type that in the chat. Father, I thank you for what you're doing at this time. But I ask that you'll preach through me and allow your people to hear what your spirit is saying right now to their hearts. In Jesus name, amen. And amen. What a beautiful thing it is for us to engage in this topic of prayer, this time of prayer that we get to participate in with one another and as a family of God. I am truly excited because we are doing something that is extremely important for each and every one of us as Christians. Prayer should be your spiritual value. Prayer should be something that you engage in every single day. And this is an amazing thing that we are engaging in this time. I'm so excited again because prayer is extremely important for as we ramp up for this year of revival at this church and for our community. I'm believing God for revival and I'm believing God for the renewal of our city. Family, you need to know how important it is for you to pray because prayer is a place you go to in order for you to grow in who you are in Christ. I, I, right now, show me someone right now who don't pray and I'll tell you that that person don't know who they are. And, and show me someone who does pray and I'll tell you that that person knows who they are because it is prayer that helps identify and helps us come to the awareness of who we are in Christ Jesus. And I know we've been having this conversation. I know we've been preaching this thing, but it's not enough for us to just talk about prayer. But it's time for us to be about prayer. Type that in the chat. Be about prayer. Be about prayer because God wants to move in our cities. God wants to move in this nation. God wants to move in our neighborhood. And if we want to see a move of God, then we have to pray. Here's what it says in 2 Chronicles verse 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. God is calling us to pray in this season. Yeah. And I'm excited that we get to engage in this time of prayer because prayer postures us for revival. Prayer brings about a revival culture. And I'm, I just wanted to point out one thing today. As you are reading this scripture and as you are spending time with me in this conversation, I want to go back to what Paul was saying 
in this text, in this book of Galatians. In Galatians, you see Paul is teaching. He's teaching about what Jesus did. Jesus, who beautifully surrendered himself to the cross, to the point of death, that by faith in Jesus, we are sons and daughters of God. We are children of God. We have received the spirit of adoption, that we are no longer slaves to the law, but that we are sons set Free. Type that in the chat. We are sons and daughters set free. We are not slaves anymore. We are sons and daughters. We are children of God. We are not slaves. So I want you to stop praying as if you are a slave. You, you are a son. We are sons and daughters. A slave. Here's what it says in John uh, chapter 8. It says, a slave does not abide in the house forever. Mm. Uh, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, if the son of God, if Jesus sets you free, we are free indeed. And for that reason, we have to move in a confidence. We have to move in an awareness. We have to move with an audacity to know that our identity in Christ is solid. My identity in Christ is, is solid. It is not moved. It is not shaken and there's nothing that can move that out of that no sin no principality God loves me and it is what it is and the thing that I love about God is that when he died he created an access for us to be sons and daughters of Jesus sons and daughters of God my brothers and sisters I want you to move with an audacity when you get into prayer Move with confidence when you get into prayer because you got a father. Type that in the chat. I got a father. <laughs> Type that right now. I got a father. You and I have his DNA. And it's easy for us to cry out, Abba, Father. Ooh. I feel like I'm preaching already, but I'm closing already. <laughs> I'm closing already because with prayer, it's not enough to just spew out information. I come to impart you, impart unto you this, 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 this spirit of the word, this, this, this culture, this identity, this power of prayer so that we can move in the activity of prayer. But it has to start with sonship. It has to start with who we are in Christ Jesus. So as I'm closing, I want to remind you. I want to stir you up by reminding you who you are. We are sons and daughters of God. We were always supposed to move with this identity. The problem is, is that we adopted this ideology. We've adopted this mindset, these systems of thinking, the brokenness to move as orphans, as slaves, as bastards. But can I remind you that Jesus gave us the right. He gave us the, the, the authority to be sons and daughters, to be children of God. Jesus came as a son. He came down as a son. Watch this. But he remained as a son. Because he knew who he was in the Father. And I feel like there's somebody that's watching me right now. You're struggling with the fact that you are a son or a daughter of God. Somebody that's watching me right now, you feel like the moment you have sinned, it has took away your right to be a child of God. In some way, somehow, you have lost sight of who you are in him. But in the name of Jesus Christ, 
I come to declare unto you that you are still a child of God. Type that in the chat. I am still a child of God. Paul writes that Jesus became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. You see, Jesus never lost his identity. Although he became sin for us, he humbled himself. He became obedient to the point of death, obedient to the cross that we might be sons and daughters of God. He empowers us to know that we are sons. We are daughters. And we are children of God. And by faith in him, by faith in Jesus, by faith in what he did for us, we pray and we move with this reality. We move knowing that we are sons and daughters of God. So as I close, no wonder the very next chapter, Galatians chapter 5, the ver first verse, here's what it says. Stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Family, you're not a slave. But you're a son. You're not a you're not a bastard. You're not you're not an orphan, but you're a son. Do not allow these ideologies, these this brokenness to remove what God has said about you. You are a son and a daughter. And when you get into this prayer, pray with this reality. Knowing that you are a child of God. You need to live this out. Knowing that who you are in him is for real. We have identity in Christ. And God wants us to pray with that awareness. So as you break out in prayer. When you break out in prayer throughout the week. And even after this message. I want you to pray with this awareness. Pray with this confidence. Pray knowing that you are a child of God. Father, I thank you for every person that is watching. I thank you, Lord God, that you are removing this ideology, this identity crisis out of the body of Christ. And that you're revealing to us that we are sons and daughters of God. Lord, I pray that you would pour out your spirit, that your spirit would testify to our spirit that we are sons and daughters. And right now we cry out, Abba, Father. We come to you, Lord, for who the Son sets free is free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen.